Hello, in this section of the tutorial we're going to learn about a pretty neat function that the calculator has and that is that it has the ability to solve simple equations. So maybe you have an equation, you know, a simple algebra equation, uh, 2x plus 3 uh, is equal to 0 or something like that and, and, and you know how to manipulate that and to subtract and divide and, and figure out what x is equal to. Well the calculator can do that too. But uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You know, my job here is to, the way I see it, is to teach you how to use this calculator the best that you can, but also to teach you its limitations so that, you know, you know what you really have here in your hands. And in this particular case, this particular function of solving equations, I think it does have a use if you're really stumped or if you have a really complicated, uh, you know, polynomial or something like that to solve. But it does have some limitations that's going to basically... I think prevent you from using it very very often but I want to go ahead and walk through it really to show you what those limitations are and also what it is useful for so that you can uh, so that you can use it so what we need to do to, do to use the equation solver is to go into the math menu and it's right here in this first little sub menu math and if you go down here uh, let's see past f min f max it's the very last one it's uh, zero here. So you can scroll down and you can hit enter or you can just go and hit the zero button for the equation solver and that's what that is. So let's go ahead and press zero here and we'll go into the equation solver. So this is where we want to be. Now the number one thing you have to remember and know when you're using the equation solver in this calculator is that whatever equation you put in here you have to set it equal to zero. So for instance if you had an equation uh, you know x plus 2 is equal to 4 you cannot type that in directly into this calculator x plus 2 is equal to 4 because the way the calculator accepts the input it already has to be equal to 0 so if you have something like x plus 2 is equal to 4 you need to subtract 4 from both sides so that your equation is going to always equal to 0 so basically whatever equation you have you need to basically manipulate it so that it's equal to 0 and then you can type it in so if you had an equation like um, uh, let's just take a simple one. Let's say x plus 3 is equal to 0. So what you would do, and you wanted to solve that for x, and that's a super simple equation. That's why I'm choosing it first, just, to, just so you can, you can see what it's doing. So if you had x plus 3 is equal to 0, you would type it in just like this. So obviously 0 is on the left here, but you know it's the same thing. x plus 3 is equal to 0. Now you know how to solve this. Subtract 3 from both sides, and the answer is going to be x is equal to negative 3. But let's let the, the calculator do it, and that way you can see what's happening. So you enter the equation in here and notice that this equation is only going to have one solution because x is only a power of one. So if it were x squared you would have two uh, solutions and so on. And while I'm thinking about it one more thing I want to tell you is that this calculator um, also can only solve equations that have real answers, real numbers. So it definitely can't do any kind of um, any kind of solutions that have complex numbers as, as answers. So you might want to go off into the mode menu first and put yourself back in, in real numbers here. It's just a good idea before starting to do that. So let's go ahead and select real numbers. and Let's get out of here. Let's go back to the math menu and I know that it's zero so I'm just going to hit zero and uh, we've got it in here. So let's go in here and this is exactly where we were. We put the equation in x plus 3 is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and hit enter and it accepts that equation and it brings us to the next page. So there's a few things here I want to talk about. The first thing is this is the equation that you entered. This is what you're trying to solve uh, for x, right? Let me skip this thing here, uh, uh, here for now. The very last th thing, this is bound. If you go down here and just look at it, what it's telling you is the bound of the solution. In other words, you, you have to tell the calculator a window. Um, for it to try to calculate the solution because one thing you have to realize is this calculator is not really using the rules of algebra that you're thinking of to solve this equation. It's got a little a little algorithm in there that's basically putting a, a bunch of guesses into this equation to find out which one is actually correct. So you have to give it a window to start its solution process. So the window is called the boundary or the bound and so you can see it's negative 1 times 10 to the 99. That's a huge negative number and if you scroll over you can see that the other bound on the other side is positive 1 times 10 to the 99. So basically I suggest you never change this boundary. It's not something you really have to change. But if you ever did want to change the boundary of to tell the calculator where to look for these solutions, then you could change these numbers here. But 99% of the time you're not going to touch them. So I don't recommend that you really touch them. So leave this alone. Let's go back up to this guy here. 
x is equal to 10. Well, that's not the answer. What's happening here is uh, whatever value that you have stored in x in this calculator, you know, from the store button or whatever, it's going to automatically pop up here. And what you need to do is you need to type in, in order for the calculator to give you the answer to this equation, you need to type in a guess. You have to give it an initial starting guess. And that from that point that you give it as your guess, it's going to begin to calculate the solution until it finds the answer to this equation. All right, so you can type in anything you want. It doesn't matter. Let's put in zero. So we're going to say our initial guess is x is equal to zero. Let's pretend I have no idea what the solution is. I'm going to say, okay, x is equal to zero. That's a guess. Now, if my guess happens to be really close to the answer, then the calculator is going to come up with the answer really quickly because it's going to start its solution process at this guess I'm giving it. If uh, the guess I give it is really far away from the actual answer, then it's just going to take the calculator longer. So don't stress out too much about this guess. Just put a number in there. Zero is a great number. Just put zero in there if you're not sure what to do. Okay, so we put x is equal to zero for a guess. We have our equation here. We leave the bound, the, uh, bound alone. And we notice we leave it bl uh, blinking on this line right here. So wherever the cursor is blinking, that is, is the variable we're going to solve for. So over here on the enter key in green is the button solve. And that's what we have to do. Hit the green button alpha and hit solve down here. And it's going to think for a second and you're going to see the answer is going to pop up. X is equal to negative 3. Notice it changed. Our guess was 0, but the calculator started to calculate the solution beginning at our guess of 0 and it inched its way over and found that, okay, at X is equal to negative 3, that's actually the answer. Now there's a couple things I want to point out. Notice that this black square appeared here. That just means, okay, when you see a black square, it means the calculator has has calculated the solution. The square was not there before because that was just our guess. The calculator hadn't actually calculated anything. So when you when you see the square, it means that's the answer. The calculator has, has guessed the answer and the, or has calculated the answer and this is it. So it's claiming the answer is x is equal to negative three. And if you look down here, it says, again with a square, it says left, right, that's what RT means, left, right equals zero. You see, we give our equations always in terms of something on the left is equal to zero. So what this is telling you is with the answer that the calculator got, this guy right here, when you plug it in, which is we can do right now, negative three plus three is zero. What it's telling you is when it plugs the answer in, um, it gets an answer of zero on the left and zero on the right. And that's, that's what it's telling you. Left hand minus right hand is equal to zero. So what it's telling you really is this last line is basically the calculator telling you, look, I calculated this answer and I'm pretty sure it's correct because when I take the left hand side minus the right hand side, when I plug this in, I get zero. So the calculator is telling you I have a pretty good uh, positive assurance that this is the right answer. Now, if you had left minus right of, of something else like you know, 0 0.789 or something, then you must have typed in a really complicated equation. The calculator's having a really hard time solving it. So if you see anything other than zero here, here's the bottom line. If you see anything other than zero, then you might not trust your solution that the calculator's given you. But I can tell you from experience that unless you're putting really complicated equations in here, it's always going to say left minus right is equal to zero. So don't stress out too much about that. So, um, you know, you got the black squares here telling you that, that that's the answer. Now let's go back and notice I'm leaving it blinking here and let's put in a different guess. We put a guess of zero. Let's put a guess of 18. Let's say I had no idea um, what the uh, solution was. I put a guess of 18 in here. Notice as soon as I began typing, these little black squares disappeared because at this point I'm entering a new guess. The calculator has not calculated the answer with this new guess. So I'm going to leave the cursor blinking on the on the X line, and when I hit the solution button, the solve button, it's going to tell it to solve for X. So I'm going to do that, and notice the answer again is negative 3, which is the correct answer. The squares pop up again, telling me the calculator has got calculated the answer. If I put in a, a guess in here of negative 3, 351, and I calculate the answer again, it's going to take a little bit longer, but I still get an answer of negative 3, and the squares still pop up, and left minus right is still equal to 0. So it's a great little example because the equation is so simple and everyone knows what the answer is. So type in the equation, give it a guess, hit solve, and there you go. Now the reason I started this lesson and said, well, there, there were some limitations is, um, number one, you have to type your equation in is equal to zero. That's a little bit inconvenient. Uh, it's not, it's not, I mean, it's not great that you have to do that. That's just the way the TI-84 is built. 
It's also not perfect that you have to give it a guess. Um, but that's the way the calculator works. It's not usually too big of a deal, but it's it would be nice if you could just type the equation and hit a button and get the answer. But the algorithm they use, does, it just doesn't work that way. So that's a little bit limiting. All right, let's do a different one. Uh, let me go up to the equation. Notice that as soon as I go up, as, I, as if I'm going up arrow into highlighting this, it goes right back to the equation solver uh, where I type my equation in. And I can hit clear here and it deletes the equation. So let's type a new one in. Let's say my equation was, on paper, x divided by 2, so x over 2, plus 3 is equal to 4. Let's say that that was my equation. Again, x over 2 plus 3 is equal to 4. Well, I can't type it in like that because it's equal to 4, and I know that I can't do that. So the, it has to be equal to 0 when I type it into this thing. The only way I can do that is to open a parentheses and say x divided by 2, and close that, because that's what I said, x over 2, plus 3, and I said that it was equal to 4, but I can't type it in that way, so I have to basically subtract 4, and this would be the equation that I would type in. So that's, that's what I was saying. It's a little bit limiting. Anything you type into this thing has to be equal to 0. So if you had x over 2 plus 3 is equal to 4, then you have to move that 4 over here so that you have 0 on the other side. Otherwise, the calculator can't do anything. Okay, so we put our equation in. We hit Enter. And our equation is right up here at the top. And it's asking us for a guess. And our bound is still here. You're not going to touch the bound. So just do this easy thing. Just put x is equal to 0. You're only going to have one answer here uh, because this is you know, a, a first ordered equation. So now we hit alpha and then solve. After a second, the uh, calculator says your answer is x is equal to two. Our squares have popped up to tell us that's the answer. Left minus right is equal to zero. It tells us our solution is, is confident and very, very good. So this should be correct. So if we put two in here, two divided by two is one. One plus three gives us four, minus four gives us zero. So this does check out, it's the right answer. Now again, if we put a guess of negative 258 in here, because we, let's say we weren't sure, and go ahead and hit solve again, we're going to get exactly the same answer. So the guess is just a starting point. The calculator should converge on the right solution, uh, unless your equation is really, really complicated. Let's do another one. Let's go ahead and press up arrow to highlight that equation. We're going to go back to the equation solver main page. Let's hit clear, get rid of that equation, and let's input an equation with two variables. Let's say you had um, x plus 2y is equal to 3. x plus 2y is equal to 3. So we'll hit x plus uh, 2 times, and you have to hit alpha to get to y here, x plus 2y. So x plus 2y is equal to 3. But I can't put equal to 3 here because it has to be equal to 0. So I need to subtract 3 from both sides. That's the only way I can get this guy here. So if I had x plus 2y is equal to 3, I need to subtract 3 to get it over here to make the other side equal to 0. So that's our equation. Let's hit enter. And it tells us, okay, this is the equation you put in. And now notice that because I have two variables here, um, it's given me a position for x and a position for y. And so I need to fill some, some blanks in here. Basically, the equation, the, the, the calculator, when it's solving equations, is only going to be able to solve for one variable. So if you have an equation with two variables, you need to supply the value for one of the other variables. So in this case, let's say y is equal to zero. Let's, let's just say y was, you know, the um, surface area of something, and, and, or the, uh, let's say y was equal to, you know, the height above sea level or something like that, and we knew it was equal to zero. So we put zero here, which is already there. And basically the calculator is going to accept this as the value of y in this equation. And let's say we want to solve for x. And we have to put a guess in here, just like we did before, so let's, let's put a guess of 1. I mean, it doesn't matter what our guess is. Now here's the important thing. When I hit the solve button here, wherever this cursor is, blinking here, that is the variable it's going to solve for. When I hit solve, the calculator is going to assume that y is equal to 0 as a fixed value, it's not solving for y. That is the value I've given to it to, to know that y is equal to 0. And given that, it will solve for the value of x. So let's go and put solve. And it's going to calculate that x is equal to 3. And of course, y is equal to 0. Now notice, notice in this case, when I did the calculation, the calculator put the little black square only next to the x line. And that's because in this case, the calculator actually only solved for x. It didn't put any... Um, 
any any uh, a square next to y because it actually wasn't solving for y. It never calculated y. Y is something that we gave to the calculator as, as just a value to use in the equation because it can only solve an equation for one variable. And so that's why it's there like that. So the, the guess is, is just like the same thing before. It doesn't really matter what we type in for the guess. I could type in 741. It'll take it a tiny bit longer to get the answer. Notice the square disappeared here. When I go over here and hit solve, uh, then the answer is going to be 3. Now let's do something which is exactly what we got before. If you put 3 in here, um, 3 plus and 2 times y, y is 0 remember, so this is just 0, so 3 minus 3 is 0, so that's the right answer. Now notice that instead of, I, of that, if I put a value here of x, let's say I put a value of uh, 4 in for x, so in this case let's say that I ask the calculator to solve for y, given that x is a given value, now we're going to be solving for y instead. And I can put any guess I want here, but let's just leave the guess of zero. Notice that I'm highlighting the Y line. I'm leaving the cursor here blinking on Y. And so now when I hit solve, it's going to solve for Y. And the answer is going to get negative 0 0.5. And the left right is equal to zero is telling me it's confident in the solution. So what we're going to have here when we plug this in, if we take Y as negative 0.5, which is the solution it got, 2 times negative 0.5 is going to be negative 1, right? So we have a negative 1 sitting right here, and we said that x was equal to 4, so 4 minus 1 gives us 3, 3 minus 3 gives us 0, so that's the answer. So the bottom line is if you have more than one variable in your equation, you need to supply all of the variables except for the one that you plan to solve for. And then whenever you go back and, and you highlight that line, and, and when you hit the solve button, whatever line you're on is going to be the one it's going to actually calculate the answer for. All right, let's go back up to our equation and type a, a different equation in, and you'll see what I'm saying. Let's hit clear, and let's say you had an equation x plus y plus z, I'm sorry, x plus y minus z is equal to 7. So let's say x plus y minus z, and that's equal to 7, but we can't put equal 7. We have to move the 7 over, so we have to say minus 7. So this is the exact same equation as x plus y minus z is equal to 7 if we move the 7 over onto the other side. So let's hit enter and notice it's smart enough to show you all the variables that you have in your equation. And it's up to you to define the values of all of them except for the one you want to solve for. So let's say y is equal to 1 and let's say z is equal to 1 also. Okay, so now if we go up to x, this is the one that we plan to solve for. We need to put a guess in here. We leave the cursor blinking on the x line, and we go and hit the solve button. And it's going to calculate a value of 7. So let's see if that's correct. Um, if x is 7, then you have 7 plus y, which is 1. So we have 8 minus z, which is 1. So 8 minus 1 gives us 7, and 7 minus 7 is 0. So that's the answer to the equation. Notice the uh, black um, square is only on this line because this is the value that it actually calculated. The other two are values that I supplied as sort of like initial conditions. And the left right is equal to zero is telling you it's pretty confident in the solution. Now there's one more thing I want to show you and that is what if you had an equation with more than one answer, like more than one uh, solution. For instance, um, any kind of equation in x where you have x squared is going to have two solutions. If you have x cubed it's going to have three solutions. If you have x to the seventh power it's going to have seven solutions. And, all, and so on and so on. So let's say you had the equation x squared is equal to 4. x squared is equal to 4. Uh, so let's go ahead and do it like that. x squared is equal to 4. But I can't put equals 4, so I've got to subtract the 4 over here. And this is exactly equivalent to x squared is equal to 4. I hit enter. Everything is the same thus far. In fact, it's really going to behave exactly the same way. Um, and let's say you try your, uh, your little initial guess at 0. And you go ahead and hit solve, and it's going to calculate an answer of 2. And this is a really simple equation, so you know that 2 is a valid answer. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So that is the correct answer. But there is another answer to this also, because you have x squared here. There's, there's going to be two solutions here. In fact, you should realize, if you've studied in some algebra, that the other solution to this equation is x is equal to negative 2. Because if I put negative 2 in here and square it, I'll also get 4. And then 4 minus 4 is 0. 
So that's true, but how do I get the calculator to calculate the other solution? Well, it just comes down to you being creative with putting your guesses in. That's really that's really the short the short answer. In other words, you need if you know that there's two solutions, which we know that there is here, you need to put some guesses, you know, kind of move them around a little bit until you get the calculator to find that other solution for you. So let's say you put a guess of, of one in here over on the positive side, x is equal to positive one. You solve it, you're going to get the same answer, x is equal to two. Now, if you put a guess in here of negative one, just, just as a guess, let's say you had no idea. Let me go ahead and take that out. Delete and delete. Uh, what if you had no idea? So you just said, okay, negative one and positive one. When we put the guess of positive one, the calculator calculated the answer was two. And now we put the guess of negative one, the calculator ca calculates an answer of negative two. Because in that case, our guess was closer to that answer, so it converged on that answer. And so we kind of changed our guesses around a little bit, and it did calculate the other correct answer. It's another good example of, you know, this is useful in some cases, but it's it's a little bit not useful because you, you have to kind of guess and you have to throw these guesses in there. If you had x to the seventh power, you, you'd have to put in all these guesses everywhere to get it to calculate the solutions. Um, and on top of that, the calculator cannot um, solve any answers that are complex, so that's going to limit a lot of the solutions that it can give you anyway. Let me go ahead and do one more, and let's delete this. And let's say we had x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. So x squared plus 2x, so we have 2 times x, uh, minus 3 is equal to 0. So that's a, a nice polynomial. We know it's going to have two solutions because of x squared up here, so we hit enter. And it's exactly the same thing. We need to start putting some guesses in here. So let's start with a guess of... Uh, let's say we put a guess of 1 in here, uh, and we're going to get it to solve for an answer. So alpha solve, and it returns an answer of 1. So we actually guess the solution uh, right out of the gate there. If we had accidentally guessed, you know, 5 as our guess and hit the solve button, it would have come back and calculated 1 as the answer. So if we put 1 in here, 1 squared is 1, plus 2 times 1. So this is 2 in the middle, so 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0, so that is the right answer. How do we get it to find the other one? Well, it's, it's just a guessing game. Since this is a positive x, let's stick a negative value in and see if it can get the other, the other uh, root. So we hit solve, and sure enough, it comes up with negative 3 as the other answer. So we put negative 3 in here, you have negative 3 squared, which is 9. And then here's 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So you have 9 minus 6. 9 minus 6 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0, so that is the other root. Of course, left minus right is equal to zero is telling you the same thing, that it's confident. So the two answers to this equation is x is equal to one and x is equal to negative three. So you can put any polynomial you want in here of any order and you can get it to find all the roots. It's just that you're going to have to provide guesses and if you have a ton of roots, if you don't provide the right guesses, you may have a hard time finding all of the roots. It's one of the limitations of, of the solver in the, in the TI-84. So you see it's, it's a useful little feature in the calculator to have this solver, but it's not the most powerful solver in the world. I mean, it can, it can do the work. It's just that the limitations are mainly that it can't provide any complex roots. And a lot of these polynomial equations are going to eventually start giving you complex answers. So it's, it can't do that. And the other problem is that it, you have to give it a guess, which is no problem if it's just a simple equation or even a, a, a second order equation. But if you have seven roots, then you're going to spend a lot of times, a lot of time putting guesses into your calculator to get the right answer. But still, it is useful in a pinch and it's something that you should know how to use in your calculator because if you have that one problem on a test that requires you to do that, then you're going to be really happy that you know how to use it. So that is a good introduction to using the solver in the TI-84 calculator. It's not that hard to use, you just have to understand its quirks, and uh, it can help you and it can save you some time.